Well, hello, everybody. This is Professor Sam Lanzafami again. Uh, we are going to continue where we left off in our last presentation. Uh, in our last presentation, we created a trial balance from some previous data. I'll just show you what that previous data was. We did a general journal. We then transferred that information to the general ledger, which is called posting, and then we created a trial balance. <clears throat> So now what we're going to do is from this trial balance, we are going to do the financial statements. And the financial statements are the items that the general public technically would have access to, especially if this was a corporation. This would be for public consumption. So what we're going to do is we're going to complete an income statement, a statement of owner's equity, and a balance sheet. In case you don't remember or in case you don't know, an income statement is a document that shows the company's profitability profitability so we're trying to figure out if the company has a net income or a net loss so in order to determine that the procedure to calculate net income or net loss is to subtract our expenses from our revenues so the only two items that appear on an income statement are revenues and those are earned air quotes earned revenues and expenses so if you look at the list that we have in the trial balance we only have one revenue account, and that is service revenue, and we only have two expenses, and those are salaries expense and wages expense. <clears throat> capital is a capital account. Unearned service revenue is a liability. Accounts payable is a liability. Supplies receivable and cash, those are assets. Remember, you can also use the account numbers to your advantage. Assets always start with one. I don't care where you are in the world. Assets always start with a one. Liabilities always start with a two, and we have two of them. Capital and drawing always start with a three. Revenues start with fours, and expenses can start with fives, sixes, sevens. There's a whole slew of different numbers that expenses could represent. So if you notice underneath the trial balance, I have a series of steps that we're going to follow here today. Step number one, we're going to copy the revenue and expenses into the income statement and then calculate net income or net loss. Okay, so let's do that. First thing we need to do is we're going to write the title revenue on the first line. Notice that's all the way to the left and has a colon symbol after it. That colon symbol basically tells anybody doing this document that expect to write an indented list. So we look and see how many revenues we have. We only have one earned revenue that starts with a four. So that's service revenue. So we're going to indent. Now if we had other types of revenue like interest revenue and sales and, oh goodness, the list can go on and on, rental revenue. Any type of earned revenue would be listed here, but we only have one. And notice that we have two columns. These two columns are not labeled like they are in the trial balance. The trial balance that you see to the left, the objective is do our debits equal our credits. We could care less about debits and credits when we do these three financial statements. Remember, this is the, what the general public sees. And the general public, for the most part, doesn't know a debit from a credit from an accounting standpoint. So we can't put this information in that type of language. So we have to put it in basically people language. <clears throat> the first column is for basically itemizing subtotals, and the second column is for grand totals. So if I only have one revenue, that one revenue is my total, and I'm going to put that number right there. Okay, let's make this entire document yellow so that it corresponds with the yellow items from the trial balance. <clears throat> Next thing, I want to write the heading expenses. Again, colon symbol. That colon symbol says, expect an indented list. So I'm here, and the first one I want to copy is salaries and wages expense. And next one is rent expense. Notice how my I have an indented list. I would continue if I had more. But because I have more than one, I'm going to use column one. So I'm going to put the 2800 representing the salaries and wages expense, and I'm going to put the 1100 representing the rent expense. 
right? Next thing I want to do is I want to do some math. I want to add <clears throat> a line underneath that 1100. And I want to add these two expenses together. And then I'm going to subtract their total from the 7200. So notice how my 3900 shows up in parentheses. I want to label that. We'll label it total expenses. Makes sense, right? Since that's what I added. <clears throat> I'm going to put this in red to make it stand out even more. And now I want to subtract those expenses from my revenue. So 7200 subtract out the 3900 and that's going to give me 3300. Now what we have to do is figure out is that a net income or is that a net loss? If you're saying net income, you're absolutely right. Whenever the revenue is greater than the expense, you have a net income. If that 3,900 was larger than the revenue, then we would have had a net loss, and that 33 would have had parentheses around it, and I probably would have put red, put it in red, and I would call it a net loss. But it's not. It's a net income. We'll put that um, that labeling all the way back at the left margin, and there's our income statement. So we ended up with $3,300 from this month's activities. Notice it says for the month ended April 30th. Okay, and it has to be past tense. You can't just say ending. Ending means it's still happening. Ending is used for a different type of document, per, per, basically something like a pro forma statement. But in this case, we have to write for the month ended. And let's just give this thing a little final touch here. First number in each column gets a dollar sign. And then final answers would get a dollar sign as well. And let me give this one a dollar sign. And now the last thing we need to do is double underline it. Double underlining shows conclusion in accounting. And now we got ourselves a perfect looking income statement. Okay, so the next document we're going to do is we're going to do the statement of owner's equity. Let's do this one in orange. <clears throat> of the stuff that was given to us in the original trial balance, the only thing we use from the trial balance is capital, and if we had it, drawing. So capital and drawing would be the two items that we would snag from the trial balance. But because this company didn't make any withdrawals this period, there are none. <clears throat> the statement of owner's equity, the objective is to figure out what the company's net worth is. So remember how I said the income statement's objective is to determine profitability? The statement of owner's equity's objective is to determine net worth. And the way you get net worth is you figure out what's your new balance in capital. So even though we don't have drawing, I'm going to enter it into this document as if it was on the list. So you can see how to handle it. So this document is really interesting because it starts with capital and ends with capital. So this is the only document that the first line and the last line in terms of words are the same. There are so many different presentations that I can show you how to do one of these statements, but I'm going to pick the easiest of the bunch, and that is we're only going to use a one-column presentation. So we're only going to use this column two. I just blacked out column one so that we don't use it. Okay, so here goes. We're going to start with E Valley Capital. And because this document starts and ends with the same wording, E Valley Capital, I need something to distinguish the beginning capital and the ending capital. So what we use is a date. So the beginning of the month date would have been April 1st. So I'll just use a numeric date. <clears throat> Preferably if it's written out, it would be preferred. But uh, so our opening balance, $20,000 in this account. Okay, so that's what we're starting with. We want to end up with either you know, a higher number or a lower number, preferably a higher number. But we start out with 20 grand. Next thing we want to do is we want to add in our answer from the income statement. So let me continue to color code for your viewing pleasure. And you'll notice that I'm going to add in my net income. 
I do not need to word to write the word add. I can leave that out, but I want to make sure you understand what I'm doing. <clears throat> and as you can see here, I'm adding the 3300 from up above. My net income makes my company worth more. If I had a net loss, my company would be worth a little less. So net income makes your capital go up. So we now want to put in a math line, and we want to do the math. So 20,000 plus 3,300 gives us 23,3. In this style, one column presentation, we don't have a fancy name for that 23,3, so we just use the term subtotal. Next thing we want to do is subtract out the drawing. So if Emily Valley had made a withdrawal during the period, we would report it here. But since we since she did not, I'll just put a zero in the spot where a number normally would have been, and this drawing would have been in the trial balance. So whatever drawing was here, we would have put that number in, in place of the zero. But because we didn't have any withdrawals, your ending balance is the same as the subtotal in this case. And we'll call this the ending capital by writing E Valley on 430 16. And final touches, let's put double underlines underneath our answer and notice that we now have a completed document. So we've done two statements so far. We've done an income statement. Purpose is to determine profitability. And you get that profitability by going revenue minus expenses. That's the formula you want to remember, revenue minus expenses. The next document we did was the statement of owner's equity. This one determines net worth. How do you get net worth? Well, basically, you're, you're kind of massaging the capital. You start with the beginning capital. You add the net income from the previous document, and then you subtract out the drawing, and then that gives you the ending capital. This ending capital of 23.3 will then be copied to the balance sheet. So notice the pattern here. The answer from the income statement gets copied into the statement of owner's equity. The answer from the statement of owner's equity gets copied into the balance sheet. So you have to do them in this sequence. Okay, finally, let's do the balance sheet. And here are the accounts from the original trial balance. I'm going to put them in blue. Those are the accounts that will be copied over to the balance sheet. <clears throat> the purpose of the balance sheet is to figure out, do our assets equal our liabilities plus owner's equity? Again, we're trying to figure this out. Liabilities plus owner's equity does it equal our assets. <clears throat> Okay, so let's start off with the term assets. And underneath assets, we're going to indent all those accounts that started with the number one from our trial balance. So cash starts with the one, accounts receivable starts with the one, dental supplies start with a one. Notice assets ended with a colon, so I need to write an indented list. So cash, accounts receivable. and dental supplies. <clears throat> so, because I have more than one, I will utilize column one. So I've listed all my assets. I now want to add them up. And the results of adding them up 25.9. Double underline that because we have our first answer and we just have to label it. We added up all our assets, so I think a good name for this would be total assets. As I tell my classes, if you forget to write this, you make a total asset of yourself. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. So you're probably rolling your eyes right now. Good, that means you're paying attention and trying to enlighten you with a little comedy. Well, little kid comedy, I guess, but that's all I got. 
All right, so let's move on to the second half of the balance sheet, which is the liabilities and the equity. So we're going to start off by typing the words, the word liabilities. And again, notice the colon. That means I'm expecting an indented list. I have accounts payable. And I have unearned service revenue. Okay, so accounts payable, 1600 and the unearned revenue, 1000 Again, this is not debits and credits. This is simply column one for itemizing, column two for totals. So I'm going to add these two numbers together. And the result is 2600 I need to label this. Since I added up the liabilities, a great name for this would be total liabilities. <clears throat> I think I misspelled liabilities. There we go. <clears throat> Notice I'm still not in balance, and that's because I still haven't added in my owner's equity. So that's our final category. So under owner's equity, we are going to copy the answer from our orange document. Remember that ending capital that we got? So in here, I'm going to put an E, Valley, capital. And the amount of the ending capital was 23.3. <clears throat> I now want to add that 23.3 to the 2600 and we're keeping our fingers crossed that this number adds up to the number up top which was 25.9 drum roll please and yes indeed 25.9 we get the same result so let's double underline that one and finally one last labeling we're gonna call this total liabilities and owner's equity. I'm just going to abbreviate it here so that we can squeeze it onto the same line. Okay, and those are the three financial statements that you want to become comfortable with. You know, throughout every accounting class you take, you will have to be aware of these three financial statements, how you acquire the data. If you look under the trial balance, I have a summary of these three steps that we took. Step number one, we copied the revenues and expenses into the income statement, and we calculated net income. Okay, step number two, copy your answer from the income statement, the 3300, into the statement of owner's equity, which is what we did, and we calculated the new and improved capital, or in other words, the ending capital. We got that by taking beginning capital, add net income, subtract out your draw, and you get your ending capital. Then we're going to copy that ending capital into the balance sheet. And in the balance sheet, your objective is to make sure, do my assets equal my liabilities and owner's equity at a specific date? So if I had copied the original 20 into here, 20,000 plus 2,600 would have given me 22,6, and I wouldn't have matched up top. So it's important that you follow the right procedure. And that's all we have for today, you guys. So thank you very much, and um, we'll see you for the next time we're together. We'll be talking about Chapter 3, Adjusting Entries. Okay, have a great day. Bye-bye.